We're going to conclude our set of three videos on how we find the electromagnetic potentials in the general case by using a Green's function approach. Um, if you're interested, I'm actually following Jackson's approach um, from his book on electrodynamics, um, and I'm not going to give the full mathematical detail, I'm just going to sketch the outline. So we're wanting to solve, as always, the equation del squared v minus 1 over c squared d2v by dt squared is equal to, and I'm going to write this in a slightly funny way, minus 4 pi rho over 4 pi epsilon naught. Of course we could cancel the 4 pi's, um, but keeping that first 4 pi in the numerator makes the use of Green's functions easier. Um, I'm going to write that as equation 1. I'm going to remind us that we have v of r and t and rho of r and t. Um, the first thing that we need to do is to do a Fourier transform. Um, in frequency space so that we end up with um, a slightly different form that gives us v of r comma omega um, and using that we can rewrite equation one um, as what's known as the inhomogeneous Helmholtz wave equation uh, where we have the following we have del squared plus k squared <coughs> excuse me um, v of r comma omega um, is, equal, is equal to minus rho of r comma omega, so of course we have to transform rho as well. Um, no, I've left out the 4 pi. Minus 4 pi rho of r comma omega over 4 pi epsilon naught. And we define k is equal to omega over c, and we don't have to worry about um, dispersion. We can do this just for each value of omega. Now, it's well known that the Green's function um, for the Helmholtz equation can be solves the equation um, without the source. So you have del squared plus k squared acting on gk of r comma r prime um, is equal to minus 4 pi delta of r minus r prime. Um, and now we see why the delta comes in. Uh, we're going to define capital R is equal to r minus r prime um, and of course r on its own is just the magnitude of the vector r. Um, since we have a, a point source at the origin um, for, in the solution for that Green's function um, we know that it must be spherically symmetric um, and can only depend on the radial function so we can rewrite the the del squared operator and we get the following we get 1 over r squared d2 by dr squared into r gk plus k squared g is equal to minus 4 pi delta of r. Um, away from the origin, um, we can remove the source term again, and we can write the following. We have uh, d2 by dr squared of r gk plus k squared r g k is equal to zero. So you'll see that we've multiplied through um, by r. I've just noticed that that should not be an r squared, that should be an r over there. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've multiplied through the equation up here, this equation by r, and because we're away from the origin, the source term goes to zero. So we now have a simple equation for um, the, the term r g k, and the solution is the following. We have r g k is equal to a e to the i k r plus b e to the minus i k r. We can find a and b by considering um, the limit where k r tends to zero, um, and we know from electrostatics that in that limit g k must equal one over r, um, and therefore we must say that a plus b is equal to one. Um, we're going to choose the positive term. Um, we're going to choose uh, only um, e to the i k r because that's an expanding spherical shell. Uh, we've gone through this argument in various places before. That's an expanding wave. So we're going to keep that. Um, and therefore we can write our solution as g k, and we'll have plus here because expand is expanding of r is e to the i k r over r. Now, to understand the time behavior 
um, of our potentials, we need to find the corresponding time-dependent Green's function which solves this equation, and this becomes rather more complicated. We have a del squared um, with respect to r, and that's important, minus 1 over c squared d2 by dt squared um, acting on g of r t r prime t prime, and that's going to equal minus 4 pi delta of r minus r prime delta of t minus t prime. Um, and just as we've defined um, r minus r prime to be capital R, we're going to define t minus t prime to be tor, um, because these are the only things that actually are important. <coughs> and I'm not going to do it, but you can show via a Fourier transform using um, our gk plus of r you can find the solution to this equation is written as um, g plus of r t r prime and t prime is 1 over r delta of tor minus r over c. Um, and I would just note that tor minus r over c is equal to t prime minus t minus r, sorry that's not quite right, minus um, t minus r over c, that's what I was aiming for there, um, which of course is equivalent to what we've called the retarded time t minus t ret. Um, and we say it's a retarded time because it's using a, the, so it's the source at a point in the past when, um, which then takes into account the time of for the electromagnetic radiation to propagate, or the, the, the source to propagate. So, using that Green's function, um, we can now write the solution. Um, v of r and t is just the double integral of um, g plus, which is actually a function of r and tor, because we don't, we're only worrying about the differences, multiplied by um, rho of r prime t prime divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, that's the source term, dr prime dt prime. And it's important to note that in other videos I've used r prime to mean the retarded, t prime to mean the retarded time, and that's not true here. t prime here is, is not the retarded time. It's just a second time that we're using in the Green's function. Um, and I've notated the retarded time as t ret. However, when we do the integral over time, so, so we're going to integrate over dt prime, um, and we find v of r and t is equal to the integral of uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught rho of r prime comma t ret, and that comes from the form of this delta function, um, which is going to act with the Green's function on the time in the integral, um, divided by r minus r prime, dr prime. And that, of course, is the form of the potentials um, that we've seen before. Actually, I think I'm just going to tidy that up and move the integral sign um, to a place which is perhaps a little bit more familiar. Um, so that is a, an approach which is using Green's functions and Fourier transforms. Um, it's more mathematically advanced um, than the other approaches I showed. So the previous video, which I, which I called a more rigorous approach, um, is actually very, very similar to this. It's just not using the language of Green's functions. The first video simply quoted the result based on a, on a plausibility argument um, and then demonstrated that they worked. So that's three different ways to understand where these solutions come from.